We've got a pretty big engine here behind you. Can you tell us a little bit about that? All right, this is a truck installation here. It's, it's pretty obvious that it has no transmission or it doesn't have a radiator, doesn't have a muffler, doesn't have catalytic converters, and doesn't have filter traps. And you'll also notice it doesn't have oil filters because it doesn't have oil in it and never needs an oil change. It's a closed loop system, similar to the refrigerator in your house. That's a closed loop system, you never change oil. So this engine operates on deionized water, is the working fluid and the lubrication. Yeah, the engine has its full torque at one RPM, so it stops and starts. It runs The engine itself will run in reverse, and it, um, it has an extremely clean exhaust because it burns fuel in a centrifuge and uh, in a circle, and it has a long time and a long flame front, where an internal combustion engine has an extremely fast burn time. And one of the reasons they have to have a catalytic converter, and they actually burn fuel in a catalytic converter to burn up the rest of the unburned hydrocarbons. And of course, an internal combustion engine is never going to be a clean engine because it has to fire under high pressures and high temperatures. And both of those things cause some pretty obnoxious gases and carbon monoxides and the, and the, and the nitrous oxide, which is pretty bad. It doesn't break down very well. Uh, and of course, even the exhaust temperature is much cooler than an internal combustion engine. You can put your hand on this engine when it's running. Uh, they're very, very smooth. And the main thing is, is they're so simple. They're a very, very simple engine. They, they appear to be a little complex thermodynamically because we move a lot of uh, air back and forth for heat regeneration as they do in a power plant. So we're saving that energy and because of that we can get an 8% right on top of the thermal efficiency of the engine itself. So it uses steam as a working fluid? Yeah, it doesn't turn into steam in the, in the we don't call it a boiler, it's not, it's a heat exchanger because it doesn't boil water in there operating at supercritical. Supercritical is a, is a high pressure fluid and it doesn't turn into steam until it expands on the top of the piston. But it goes through compression chase, change phases as the RPMs increase at, at one RPM where it has its most torque, the engine can run forward and backwards, but it, uh, and it has that high torque. But as the RPMs increase, you use the inertia of the piston for compression and you recompress the residual, what's left in there, and it increases the thermodynamic cycle because it raises the temperature on the top of the piston. At lower speeds, we take the compression and run it back into the combustion chamber for a reheat stage, and that keeps it at a high thermodynamic cycle. So the engine goes through a lot of thermodynamic changes. However, the machine is very simple. It only has six valves in it, six little pistons, which are very small because the pressures are so high. And you know, it's not using half the engine for a compressor like a gasoline engine does. It only has basically two main bearings in it, so it's simple. It's back to simplicity. Like your, your old car would look when you open the hood and you look down and you can see the ground around it. Well, that's a complete engine. It doesn't have all those accessories. So what's the efficiency of something like this? It's in the 30% range plus. Okay. We've got some performance curves here. Can you take us through them? Okay, this is the, a torque curve diagram of the uh, 330 horsepower truck engine. It's, as you can see, this is the torque in this direction, RPMs here. It has an extremely high tor starting torque at one RPM. The engine can, of course, can run forward and backwards, and of course the torque curve flattens out as the RPMs increase. For an internal combustion engine, the high torque is at the wrong end of the engine. That's why you have to go through a gear change to convert horsepower back to torque. So. What we do here, this engine has its highest torque here and flattens out as, as an electric motor would. So at, at a stoplight, the engine doesn't run, so you're not expelling fuel, only a, a minor amount to take up any thermal losses through insulation and so forth. The secondary torque curve over here is as it sits for a while, it builds up a little latent heat and you can get a, a real high burst of acceleration, like every so many minutes that you would stop. But in normal operation, you have enough acceleration to, to pull a, a pretty good load without having to have a, a big transmission. Now, of course, the, it doesn't have a radiator because we use that heat that would be normally blown off of a radiator of an automobile. We take that heat and it runs around a heat exchanger. Where this blower takes the air in here, there's a heat 